Welcome back guys, Jay Bio here for another exciting video on Chem 2. Today our focus is going to be on solubility and net ionic equations. Now, when we talk about solubility, primarily what we are focusing on is aqueous solutions, that is ionic compounds that are dissolved in water. Now, a lot of times when we mix two solutions that appear to be clear, we get what is known as a precipitate out of that. Now that precipitate is determined based on the solubility rule. Some compounds are soluble and some are insoluble. And then based on that information, we can write a net ionic equation, which demonstrates what is changed as the reaction takes place. All right, let's see how we're going to get through this today. Hopefully by the end of this video, you should be able to understand how precipitates form in chemical reactions. And you should also be able to write out full and net ionic equations of reactions to determine what precipitates form in a chemical reaction. Not too many vocab terms for you this time. We're going to focus on the term soluble, insoluble, precipitate, full ionic equation, net ionic equation, and spectator ions. So when ions mix, they may be soluble, which means that they are dissolved, so you cannot see them, or they may be insoluble, not dissolved in water. Again, this primarily focuses on the solubility rules, which you'll get here in just a little bit. Now, when this happens, when we take two uh, aqueous solutions and we mix them together, a precipitate may form based on the individual ions that are present in the solution. So if we take two sets of solutions that are soluble, we may end up forming an insoluble compound, as you see there on the right. That yellow solid that is formed into the solution is a precipitate. So how do we figure all this out? Well, the chemical reactions in solution are very similar to other chemical reactions that you've seen before. If you are given two reactants, you just simply predict the products as you normally would with a double displacement reaction, just like what I've done here on the right with ammonium sulfide and cadmium 2 nitrate, producing ammonium nitrate and cadmium sulfide. We then use the solubility chart to determine if they are soluble or insoluble in solution. Again, taking a look on the right, NH4S, which should be NH42S, but regardless, is soluble, so it's dissolved into solution. CdNO32 is also aqueous, NH4NO3 is also aqueous, but CdS is a solid when it is in solution, so if you were to mix the two chemicals from the reactant side, you would get a product that is aqueous, which means it's dissolved in water, as well as a solid. Now, when we show these as compounds, we have to keep in mind that when they are aqueous, they are dissolved into their individual ions. So it's really an NH4 plus ion and an S minus 2 ion that are present in solution, not the entire compound. And again, we determine this by looking at the solubility chart that is listed here. Everybody will get a copy of this, but it's important to make sure that you understand the rules. So if you see something that's soluble, that means that it's aqueous. If it's an exception to a soluble, then it is a solid. Things that form insoluble compounds would be solid, and the exceptions would be aqueous as well. So the first thing we want to look at is making the total ionic equation, and that shows all of the ions with charges that have dissociated into solution. We need to keep in mind that solids do not break apart. So based on the information that we looked at in the previous slides, we can look and see that all of the aqueous compounds break apart into their individual ions. Those individual ions are listed there on the right. However, cadmium 2 sulfide, based on the solubility rules, is a solid, not aqueous. The other thing to keep in mind is that total ionic equation does not have subscripts except for polyatomic ions, so we're looking at the number of ions that are dissolved in solution. This actually helps us later on when we determine the net ionic equation. Because what we look at is that the net ionic equations show only the compounds that undergo a chemical change in the reaction, so it's imperative for us to look at changes of state. Ones that do not participate are known as spectator ions. Think like a spectator watches as they are watching this reaction take place. These are canceled then to form the net ionic equation. So if I look here, 2NH4 plus and 2NH4 plus are both on the left and right side of the equation so that they cancel. Same as with 2NO3 minus. We have that on the left and the right so it cancels. So our net ionic equation takes aqueous sulfur ions, aqueous cadmium ions to form a solid cadmium 2 sulfide. It's pretty straightforward, but let's practice with the practice problem. So the question asks us to write out the net ionic equation for the reaction of zinc nitrate and ammonium sulfide. So the first thing we need to do is to write our reactants properly. Remember, we need to use proper nomenclature rules as we go through and do this. So zinc nitrate, or Zn is a plus 2, nitrate minus 1, so ZnNO32, 
plus ammonium sulfide. And again, I'm going relatively quickly because I'm pretty familiar with the rules, but again, if you need to take your time, take your time. Remember that this is a double displacement reaction. And then we go back and we balance our equation. Now, the next thing we need to do is to look at what is aqueous versus what is solid. And again, we're going to use the solubility rules to figure that out. So this here is aqueous because all nitrates are aqueous. All um, ammonium compounds are aqueous as well. ZNS, if you look at the chart, is actually a solid. And NH4O3 is also aqueous. Okay? So based on this, we can write out the total ionic equation, because remember, whatever is aqueous breaks apart into its individual ions. So let's start with a Zn, aqueous, plus, there were no subscripts, 2 NO3 minus, aqueous as well, plus 2 H4, ah. Make sure to write out all your subscripts, ions, charges, all that good stuff. Remember that solids stay together. And we'll finish up with two more aqueous ions. Looks like a lot, but it does fit on one page, so just make sure that you're, you know, working through that pretty diff pretty uh, easily. Yeah, words, they're tough. So now what we do is we cancel out things that are similar on the left and right side. So 2NO3s cancel, 2NH4s cancel, and what I'm left with is my net ionic equation. I'm left with what has changed over the process of the reaction. So Zn, 2 plus, it's aqueous plus sulfur with a minus 2 that is also aqueous yields zinc sulfide which is a solid and there's my net ionic equation right there it's meant to be an E you figure it out alright so again take your time make sure you know all of your rules again nomenclature is really important here and just practice 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 alright we'll see you in just a moment all right, guys, that's the end of this video. So hopefully by the end of this, and by that I mean right very now, you're able to understand how precipitates form in chemical reactions. And you're also able to write out full and net ionic equations of reactions to determine what precipitates form in a chemical reaction. All right, guys, we'll see you next time. This is Jaylan Bio. Make sure you like, subscribe, leave a comment down below, and shop merch. we got some great holiday merch that's coming out soon. If you think you know ugly Christmas sweaters, just wait until you see one with my face on it. Oh, that's just sad. All right, we'll talk to you later, guys. Have a great day. Bye-bye.